the Conrad Bali is located off of an unassuming street in New Sadua, just a bit north of the gated enclave holding most of the area's five-star resorts. When I booked my room at the Conrad Bali, I had tempered expectations. It's not that I expected anything bad, but I did wonder exactly what I was getting. Conrad is Hilton's premium brand, but the room rates here are considerably lower than other premium properties in the area. I read positive recent reviews, but some of the older reviews noted poor service and subpar facilities. Given my tempered expectations, I was pleasantly surprised. Come inside with me and I'll explain why. Hey, this is JR, AKA The Tourist. Welcome to the Conrad Bali. This is not a review, but merely my impression of the property. Nusadu is located on the eastern side of Bali's southern peninsula. It is an area of resorts, most of them sitting on Nusadua Beach and the adjoining beaches. Benoa Beach is a stretch of land jutting north from the main part of Nusadua, a peninsula on a peninsula. The Conrad is just under 10 miles from Denpasar Airport. The ride takes about 30 minutes depending on traffic. Although Nusadua itself can be quite sleepy, it does make an okay base for exploring east towards Uluwatu or north towards Ubud. I'll say right off the bat, I love the design of this hotel. There are many resorts in the area with roughly the same Balinese design aesthetic. Some do it better than others. The Conrad isn't the most lavish example of this style, but it does have a certain modernist twist that really does it for me. This aesthetic most comes through in the lobby. There's something about this main building and the way it connects to the other parts of the resort, especially the flow through the lobby to the balcony, looking out over the grand pool. For me, this is the high point of the Conrad Bali. The monolithic stone columns, the cantilevered roofs, the scale of the space. It all melds well with the wood and the wicker and all the other little touches of indigenous design. I arrived a little before check-in time and my room is not ready. Let's take a short walk around the pool area while we wait. As we make our way to the pool, Let's chat about the Conrad brand. Conrad is a Hilton brand, named for the company's founder, Conrad Hilton. The first Conrad opened in 1985, and it was Hilton's main luxury brand until the introduction of the Waldorf Astoria collection in 2006. Today, Conrad is one of four luxury brands operating under the Hilton umbrella. The graphic does not include LXR, a recent addition. Let's pause for a moment and admire the Conrad's large main pool. At times, the difference between a very good Hilton and a Conrad can seem minute. Such is the way with hotel brands. For instance, the entry level rate at the Conrad Bali is about 60 US dollars or 50% more than the equivalent room at the Hilton, also in Nusadua. But the Umana Bali, an LXR property located west of here in Uluwatu, starts at around 600 US dollars or three times the Conrad. Although the Umana is an all villa resort, so comparing it to the Conrad suites or villas might be the better comparison. Here the Umana rates are still more expensive, but with a less dramatic margin. I don't want to get too into the weeds on this. The key takeaway is that the Conrad is nice. Nicer than the Hilton and many of the other mid-range five-star resorts in the area. But it's not as nice as the other high-end properties in Nusadua, like the St. Regis or the Ritz-Carlton. How much nicer are those properties? 
In truth, I can't rightly say. I haven't stayed at those hotels. But I will be back to Nusadua, and I will show you what I find. If you'd like to see, then please consider subscribing to the channel. I post a new video every week. Hotel tours, along with destination guides, and more. Join me, and we'll tour the world together. I believe the room is ready. Let's head up. I did have to wait a little bit to check in, despite it being the low season. However, I was upgraded to a pool viewer room on the basis of my Hilton Honors Gold member status. Also, I did notice the hotel was using the opportunity of low season to refurbish some of the rooms. I imagine that took some of their inventory offline. At capacity, the Conrad has 358 keys ranging from normal guest rooms to suites and several villas. I booked a deluxe twin, the entry level room, but was upgraded to a pool viewer room. My room rate did not include breakfast, but my status did give me free breakfast for two guests. For Hilton Honors members with status or with points to spend, the Conrad Bali can be a great deal. Welcome to room 3120. My first impression of the room is that it's small, although this is partially about the layout. We are greeted by two twin beds with not so much space between them and no other seating in the room. Perhaps because of the size of the room, I was immediately drawn to the balcony and to the view. Normally, a view of the pool doesn't do that much for me, but I was very pleased with this view. Weather and mosquitoes permitting, the day bed here makes up for the lack of other seating inside. The recessed angle of the balcony and the trees between the building and the pool offer a measure of privacy. Returning to the room, I can see that it is more spacious than it appeared at first glance. For one thing, the desk is in a sizable nook which I appreciated as I had some work to do. If your trip is purely leisure, I can imagine wishing this were a sofa or just more space for the beds. Just to the left of the front door is a walk-in closet. There is plenty of hangar space as well as shelves for both luggage and clothing. The ability to put all of your things in this closet creates more space in the main room. The spacious bathroom adds to the overall square footage of the room. But the combination of dark materials and lighting with a weird color temperature makes the bathroom a bit glum. Overall, the room could use more light. The main part of the room is helped by the balcony windows but the bathroom, the area by the desk, and the closet are all a bit on the dark side. The mini bar is on the sparse side, though adequate. There is complimentary water, tea, and coffee. The coffee option is grounds for the accompanying French press. In the fridge, there are soft drinks, craft beer, and some snacks. These are all chargeable. Now that you've seen the room, let's go back out and begin exploring the rest of the resort. The Conrad is quite expansive. We'll pick up by the pool and continue exploring the grounds. On either side of the main pool, you'll find the Lagoon Pool, which fans out and creeps up to the sides of the main building and spills out to cover its beach-facing sides. There are rooms and suites with direct access to the Lagoon Pool.
WATG Architects, the firm responsible for a number of internationally branded resorts in Bali, and FSC Architects, both Hawaii-based firms, collaborated on the design and planning for the Conrad. In a description of the project, the architects note wanted to give all of the rooms an ocean view. A challenge tackled through the use of the angled room design, as well as placing the buildings around a number of courtyards. Also, the placement and the scale of the buildings emphasize the natural elements of the property. The Conrad Bali is a large resort, set on more than six acres. And though it is somewhat sprawling, the buildings always seem to be in the background. I'm spending a lot of time on the pools and the resort grounds because they're quite pleasant, but also because you're likely to be spending more time here than on the beach. But I'll say more about that when we see the beach. The resort has a number of activities and experiences, including bike rental and a water sports kiosk. I believe the water sports are operated by an outside company. A number of the hotel's activities are focused on wellness and those are booked through the spa, which is towards the northern end of the property. We'll head back that way now, stopping to consider the beach. If you're looking for soft sand and sweeping scenic views, Nusa Dua has some of the better beaches on Bali. However, the area of Banoa is less so. Nusa Dua Beach, just to the south, definitely has the more scenic beach, but the Conrad does what they can with what they have. Up here, the beach is rockier, the view is less sweeping, and a lot of seaweed washes up on the shore. The first two can't be helped, but the hotel staff do their best to clean up the seaweed every morning and throughout the day. The result is that there are essentially two parts to the beach. Further up on shore, it's quite pleasant, with soft sand, umbrellas, and the possibility of a massage. But down by the water, the seaweed menaces. I don't want to write off this beach completely. It may not be as scenic as the stretch of beach further south, but it's still nice to look at. As testimony to the beach's photogenic qualities, look no further than the placement of Infinity, the resort's wedding chapel. Let's have a last glance at the beach before heading in and seeing the rest of the property. The main hotel buildings take the shape of a large, elongated capital E. The main pool occupies the lower space in the E, and the upper space contains this terraced courtyard. These Balinese gazebos are a staple in the design of local houses. Here they are decorative, but find use for activities like yoga and meditation. By this point, you should be getting an idea of what the grounds of the Conrad Bali look like. So I'll take this opportunity to talk about whether this is the resort for you. As I said earlier, this is not a review, but I do want to give you some sense as to whether this would be a good choice for you. To that end, here are the tourists' do's and don'ts. Do choose the Conrad Bali if you want a luxury resort in Nusa Dua, but don't want to spend on rates at the very high end. If you appreciate the big pool and the lush surrounding grounds, or if you enjoy striking architectural styles. On the other hand, if you do want more of a high-end luxury experience, or if you're looking for a really picturesque beach and intend to spend a lot of time on the beach, 
or if you prefer smaller, more intimate resorts, then there are better options for you in Nusa Dua. The Conrad Bali is 20 years old and showing its age in some places, although there are ongoing refurbishments. The service was a little bit underwhelming for a luxury property, but the staff was friendly and there were no issues about which I can complain. I enjoyed my time here and would definitely consider a return. However, there is a wide range of options in Nusa Dua, including similarly priced but newer properties that fall in that mid-range five-star tier, as well as more luxurious resorts that command a higher price. Ultimately, it comes down to a combination of your preferred price point, the level of service and facilities you want, and any brand preferences that you have. This area here, the pond, the wall of trees and greenery, the way the foliage obscures the building hidden behind, this is one of the areas where the design succeeds. For a large resort, the Conrad does a good job at feeling intimate and making you feel surrounded by nature. This area of the resort houses many of the suites. The smaller pool here leads up to Rin, the Japanese restaurant. Rin is open all day and is an option for breakfast. Past Rin, we find the neighborhood of villas. Just past this water feature is the gym, and this boss sits just above that. The gym is on the small side. There are enough cardio machines, but the strength training options are limited. The spa is upstairs, on what is the same level as the hotel lobby. I can't say anything about the treatments, but I can give you a look inside. Between the spa and the lobby, there is a series of hallways and courtyards containing some of the hotel's event spaces as well as some shops. This is another one of those areas where the Conrad's take on traditional Balinese design has been done quite well. These courtyards lead back to the lobby. Instead of showing that again, we'll proceed down to the hotel's main restaurant for dinner and a show. My first night at the resort, I had dinner at Suku, the restaurant directly below the lobby. Originally, I had planned on visiting 8 degrees south the seafood restaurants situated closer to the beach. But at Suku, there was an Indonesian barbecue along with a traditional Balinese performance, so I opted for that. The venue itself is fine, but it does scream hotel restaurant. I know that's neither here nor there, but I hope you grok what I mean. Inside, there is an assortment of Indonesian salads, 
and a table of items meant for kids. Outside are the main dishes, meat heavy and most of them delicious. Overall, the meal was good, not exceptional. It's about the same as you might expect from a good local restaurant or while room. I had no idea what to expect from the performance. It's beginning now. We can watch together. The MC introduces the story's characters. And then the chorus enters. This is the Kachak, a traditional form of Balinese music and dance. There are no instruments in this performance. The music is provided by the performers, who chant, while moving their arms and hands in unison, providing the backdrop for the story that plays out inside and around their circle. The story is from the Ramayana, an ancient epic poem. Like Bali's Hinduism, the Ramayana comes by way of India, part of a culture spread by traders from the Indian subcontinent hundreds of years ago. The dancers enter the frame. There is Sita, the Hindu goddess, and Rama, her consort. They have been exiled to the jungle. Ravana, a king, enters and steals away with Sita. Jatayu, a demigod, who has the form of an eagle, comes to the couple's aid. Jatayu is an old friend of Rama's father. Alas, Ravana gets the best of Jatayu, clipping one of his wings. Is all hope lost? No. Rama's servant, Hanuman, the white monkey, comes to battle Ravana. How does it end? I won't spoil it. After dinner, I take a stroll taking in the sight of the main building illuminated over the pool. Then I head towards 8 degrees south, the seafood restaurant. After, I head back up to the lobby, where a singer and a guitar player entertain the patrons at the East Lobby Lounge. I have a drink and enjoy the music before calling it a night. In the morning, I return to Suku for breakfast. Normally I get up early to film the grounds and breakfast, but I was with family on this trip and made it here during the rush. I chose not to fight through people to get shots at the buffet. I did get a shot of my avocado toast with a well-poached egg. This is as good a place as any to end this look at the Conrad Bali. If you have enjoyed this tour, hit the like button and help the video to spread. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for future hotel impressions, destination guides, and more.